All right, David. Let me take you back to what you said originally, that you were with your sister in Margate on Sunday and Monday and not at Honeyford Road. Lies. I didn't stay the night. I came back Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Not Monday, like I said. So did you ask Eileen to provide you with an alibi? Oh, she knows nothing of this. But she must do, David, because she confirmed your story. She said that weekend was the anniversary of your wife's death. It wasn't. She said you spent it with her and you didn't. I don't want my sister dragged into this. I'm afraid she already is, David. Leave her out of it. I'll tell you nothing. She drag her into it. Take it easy. Oi, 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 oi. It's hardly going to be about 20 minutes, isn't it? Small interview, sorted out. Turn left. I hated it down there anyway. A godforsaken cold bastard of a place. I might as well come home. Do something useful. Get some more work done in the garden. So what time did you get back to London? About five. I did some more work. I went inside. I was watching the telly in the front room when I saw her. Who did you see, David? I saw the girl, Joanne. She was standing at a bus stop, waiting for a bus that didn't run on a Sunday. And what time was that? About half past eight or nine. It was getting dark. I watched her. She was standing on one leg behind the other. So I was swinging herself. I thought I'd better tell her. I went out to her. Told her the bus didn't run. Said she should phone for a taxi. Told her she could use my phone. She came into the house. This interview is being tape recorded. I'm Detective Sergeant Robert Oswald, attached to Southampton Road Police Station. The other officer present is... Detective Inspector Frank Birkin. I'm interviewing. Can you please state your full name and date of birth? Anthony Allen. Fifth of May. Louder for the tape, please. Anthony Allen. Anthony Allen, 5th of May, 1969. We must be allowed to see our son. The officer in charge will be out to see you in a moment. I don't believe this is happening. Well, it is. Come and sit down. The officer won't be long. I tried to touch her. Touch her tits. Do you remember what she was wearing, David? No. Was she wearing a bra? I don't think so, no. And then what happened? I hit her. I admit I knew her. She was your girlfriend, Tony. No, she wasn't. I told you. She was going out with the lead singer. I asked her out, but she said no. So how come she ended up at Honeyford Road with you? I had some tapes there she wanted, songs for her to learn. She came in after my dad went to work. 
stayed for an hour or so, that's all. And then you took her to Harvey's no. house? No! Because you knew he was away for the weekend. You used your father's keys and went next door with her. What happened then, Tony? I didn't kill her. I tied her up. Hands behind her back. What with? I don't remember. I gagged her. I had sex with her. Afterwards, I left her lying there. And where was this? What do you mean? Which room were you in? The kitchen. A belt. I tied her with my belt. Left her lying there. Went and watched the telly. I don't know why. It was like a dream. What kind of a brother are you to say things like that to me? I'm not your brother. I'm a police officer. Because you want to be white? You hate your black brothers and sisters. You're black! Why did you give up playing the bass after that concert, Tony? You're a sellout. You wouldn't understand. Try me. Bass notes are the pulse. They come up at you through the soles of your feet. They sound inside you here. They beat with your heart from beneath. Heartbeat from beneath the earth. You see, you don't understand. I couldn't play anymore. I play anymore. Why ask questions? You don't understand. She must have choked on the gag. I was sick. All around her nose and mouth. I didn't mean to kill her. I must give Mr. Harvey his medication. I'll be back soon, David. I'm concluding this interview. The time is 8.10. I'm sorry, this must be awful for you. I've known him all my life. I don't know him at all. You'll be all right to go back in? Yeah. I'll, um, I'll get us a coffee, all right? she come back? She's inside you. I can see her looking out at me. Looking at me through your eyes, reaching out to me. You see, I'm her friend. She wants to get away from you. you you're a coffin. I mean, you suffocate her. You're a coffin. Your eyes are little windows. I can see inside you. Through your eyes, see, Joanne. She hates you.
What did you do with Joanne's body? I kept it in a cupboard under the stairs till the following night. I dug a hole. Put the earth in bags. I had a lot of plastic sheeting. I wrapped her up in the sheeting. Buried her. I'm sorry, Jason. I'm sorry you have to hear all this. I just needed you to be here. Did you bury anything else with her, David? Yes. What? A plastic bag. What did it contain? I don't know. Have you seen him? They won't let me see my boy, my Tony. I banged the earth flat. Laid the rest of the slabs. Cemented them in. There was a smell. The darky next door complained. Told him it was the dreams. Thank you, David. Would you like a car home? No, it's all right, thanks. I'd rather walk. Thank you. Bloody brilliant bus. Nail the bastard's bollocks to the floor. Think so? I know so. Oh God, hospital to press me. All right then. Do you fancy a lift home? Black bastard, I deserve Tony, all I get. Tony, just stop it, man. I'm a black bastard. I deserve all I get. Tony, I'm will a you black stop bastard, it? I deserve all I get. Tony. My black boss I got it now. A word in a minute. Now, Sergeant Oswald. I'm concluding this interview at 11:25 p.m. What's going on in there between you two? What do you Where mean? What do I mean? He's off his head. That's your considered psychological opinion, is it? You're one arrogant bastard, you know that? Don't look at me like that, Frank. You've been wanting to have a go at me ever since I arrived at this poxy nick. Well, go on, then. What the hell's going on? Butt out, Mike. Don't tell me to butt out. I'm in charge of this area. Prisoners are my responsibility, right? So where's his brief? He said he didn't want one. Look, that boy's climbing the walls in here. Has he been seen by the doctor? Not yet. It's in hand. In hand? The arresting officer hasn't even got credible evidence. Look, don't tell How me my job. How would you know anyway? Look, you got nothing from him that would stick in court. Now, you should go back into the cells until the boss has been informed. Hands off, Frank. Leave him alone. This is my kill, right? Hey, hey, You're on, just pissed off because a token black's going to have this case signed, sealed, and on the governor's desk by morning. Bollocks, you are. I'm phoning Tennyson. This is 
a waste of time. You're wasting my time. Come on, Tony. You're as guilty as hell. I've known it from the first time I saw you. Your guilty secret's written all over your face. I am guilty. Then tell me what happened that night. We're all guilty. All you've done is cry like a baby! Well, you're pathetic! I'm sick of listening to you. You're a blood clot, mummy's boy! I met her death, or you go back in the bin and you sweat! No! <laughs> Bastards! Stop! Come on, take it easy, Stop son. this! Stop this! Stop it! Stop! Stop! Just calm no. down, all right? Stop this! <laughs> Tony Allen's back in his cell. Look at that doc's got to give another call. Mr. and Mrs. Allen, are you uh, still in reception? Ah, well, Budge, you should have gone home hours ago. Let the lad sleep it off. Let Tennyson deal with it in the morning. Oh, come on. generates a good contest too, doesn't it? Yeah, well, Jim Lewis always in good fights anyway, right? Always good value for money. It's nice actually to see him boxing at British title level. Get a knife somewhere! What do you think you're doing? Get a knife! Oh, oh, 
Give me a mask. It's too late. Now! Mask! Hey! Are you listening to me? Hey, you lot out there. I know what's going on, you know. I'm not stupid. Okay, here we go. Ready? It's no good, he's dead. It's no good, Bob, he's dead. Look at me. Look at me! Look at me! The boy's dead. Leave him. He's dead. Hey, come on, you guys. Come on, is there anybody there? Now, hang on, hang on, the machine's on. Yeah, who is it? Frank? What was he doing in the cells? Jesus Christ. I'm on my way. Cover him up, Frank. Good. Let's start getting packed up, Ed. Someone give off the breathe ring, let him know that they're about to move. Get him moved, Percy. I'm not moving. 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 I'm not mo
sole responsibility. Oh, sir, I was under a lot Put in your report. Now it's out. Well, that's my promotion down the toilet. A boy's lying dead in the cells and you're worried about your promotion. Just don't start, all right? The custody sergeant told me Birkin was trying to call you, worried by what Oswald was up to. Birkin's supposed to be a detective inspector, not a limp dick. He should have sorted it. Calder should have sorted it. But they bloody didn't, Christ did Christ almighty, do I have to do everything all myself? All right, all right. I mean, what's Birkin being paid to all do? All right, I hear you. How'd it go with Harvey? He confessed to murder. Thank Christ for that. But I've got my doubts about it. What? We're being handed gift wrapped and you've got your doubts? Yes, I do, and I have good reason for it. Look, Gov, what I need now is to know what went on in that interview room. I mean, what made well, Tony kill himself, for Christ's sake? Riots the lot. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You remember who you're talking to. I'll listen to those interviews and I'll report back as soon as I can, sir. You do that. By the way, you do know that Tony's mum and dad are still in reception, don't you? Well, they can't be told. Not until we get things sorted. What? Send them home. Tell them tomorrow. For their own sakes, it would be better to be told in the morning. No, we can't Yes, do we that. can. Well, how would we explain that in court? That would reek of a cover-up. Besides... Think how they'd feel. I've made my decision. Well, that's a bad one. Well, that's what I'm paid for. Oh, you're paid to make bad decisions, are you? You know what I mean. How much have you had to drink, Mike? Now, you bloody watch it. None of this would have happened if you'd have kept Oswald on a tighter rein. Now, you brought him in, not me. I didn't ask for him. He's a loner. He's a one-man band. He's not my type. It's not what I've heard. I beg your pardon? Nothing. No, you explain that comment. I'm merely suggesting that you might have let your personal feelings for him cloud your judgment, that's all. My personal feelings? Do I have to spell it out for you? You had an affair on that course. There, now. I didn't want to mention it, but... Nothing happened on that course. You will bloody argue, won't you? You've been misinformed. I hope so. For your sake. Show Mr. and Mrs. Allen up to my office, will you, please? Not a word about what's happened, understood? Thank you. Bob. I'm sorry, I can't talk about it right now. I've got to see Colonel. Colonel knows about us on the course. I... Listen, if you've been bragging about having laid the governor... Look, what do you take me for? Do you think I'd say anything? right now is I've got to go and tell that boy's parents that their son is dead. And that boy's dead because of me. Do you really think it matters that Kernan knows about us? Yes, it matters. Time, Chief Inspector. We've been waiting out there for an eternity. Please, can you give my son this? Esther said he didn't even have time to get a coat. I hate to think of him spending the night in a cell. I don't want him to catch cold. Would you sit down, please? I... I have some bad news to tell you. I just want my son. Esme, please sit down.
I'm afraid that after Tony was returned to his cell after questioning, he took his own life. Oh. Is he hurt? Vernon, your son is dead. I'm very sorry. Do you understand? I'm so sorry. How? Oh. He uh, used strips of his own clothes. You killed him. You killed him. Oh. You killed him. You killed my boy. You killed him. 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 My boy. You killed him. You all killed him. You killed him. You killed him. When? I mean, when exactly? Between midnight and half past twelve. While we were waiting in reception? Yes. Eh. Lady. <laughs> you rotten hell. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. What I got? They think they know. Organize a car for them. I think Mrs. Allen will need to see a doctor as well. They probably both will. You okay? Straight away, please. Excuse me. Do you, uh, go to your right. I'll, I'll show you out. Okay. And soon the speculation will come to an end. The latest opinion poll gives Conservative Ken Bagnall a three-point lead over yes, Lady Jonathan Phelps. Have the family been informed? Good. What about MS-15? We'll get on to them straight away. David Thorndike should lead the investigation, which is good news for us. <laughs> Absolutely. A complete bastard. But a complete bastard who is the most likely candidate to take over from you if you get the move upstairs. And that will surely depend on how you handle this business from now on. Kenneth Trevor Bagnall, Conservative, 13,137. Not enough. Jonathan Phelps, Labour, 16,000. Did you hear that? It's in David's best interests to stop Southampton Row being dragged through the mire. Keep me informed. Well, we better be going. <sighs> Looks like I've got an early start in the morning. I'm not talking about Oswald's part in this. You and Mike Calder had the authority to stop those interviews, but you didn't. You let them continue. Oh, no. Better yet, you let Oswald interview that lad on his own while you sat by the telephone waiting for me to do your job for you. Yes. <laughs> right. The rank of inspector is supposed to mean something, Frank. It, it carries responsibility. No, it, it's supposed to denote a certain authority. You won't make excuses.
You'll face the music like a man. That'll be all. I mean, I just, I just don't understand it. We're at Harvey's bedside getting a confession. Meanwhile, Bob's off chasing Tony. It doesn't make sense. His ass is grass. That's a dreadful thing to have happened. When you carry something like that around with you the rest of your life. Yeah, They'll close it now, won't they? <laughs> this space should be suspended. I mean, why was he brought in in the first place? You know why, Frank. To talk to his people. Yeah? Well, now, one of them's dead and it's down to him. <laughs> Look, I'm not exaggerating or nothing, right, but that boy was really weird. I mean, like, climbing the walls, screaming and shouting, and he was, like, mental. And believe me, I tried to tell him. Of course you did, Frank. She's here, come on. Good morning, everyone. Well, I expect you've all heard about the events of last night. Just to clarify, Tony Allen hanged himself in cell number seven using strips of his own clothes. I informed his parents shortly afterwards. Now, obviously, we can expect a good deal of adverse publicity from this. I'm told we can also expect an internal inquiry led by DCI Thorndyke to begin almost immediately. Needless to say, I regret what has happened. But Operation Nardine continues. But surely, Mum, if Harvey's confessed, I mean, that's it, isn't it? Quite honestly, I'm not convinced about David Harvey's version of events. Well, admittedly, there are a few inconsistencies, Guff, but... Inconsistencies? Yeah. He said she wasn't wearing a bra. She was. He said he used a gag on her. We, we found no traces of <coughs> yeah. a gag. Well, he could have removed it. It could have rotted away. Well, yeah, it could have. But he said he killed her in the kitchen. And the fragment of tooth was found in the front room. Well, perhaps oh. there was violence in the front room before the murder took place. Perhaps he moved the body after. I mean, he did say yeah, he hit well, her. Well, perhaps, perhaps, perhaps won't stand up in court. To be quite honest with you, I don't think the confession of a dying man is going to stand up in court either. But he, he knew that our hands had been tied with a belt. Yeah, and he said, my belt. I mean, look, did that belt look like anything David Harvey might wear? Look, she was wrapped in polythene sheeting. There was a plastic bag buried with her. And he said the body remained above ground, which ties up with the maggots and that. I mean, yeah. none of these details were mentioned in the press. Exactly. Look, I'm that. as certain as you are that Harvey was involved, most probably in the disposal of the body, but I'm not sure that he killed her. We've got to go over Harvey's statements with a fine tooth comb. We've got to look at what Tony Allen had to say again. You won't get much there, Gov. I know I was there. You may have been there, but you obviously weren't listening. Sir. Sir. Frank, don't you think it's a bit late to be pulling rank? Now, look, we've messed up but badly. So now we've got to work twice as hard. Why? If David Harvey didn't actually murder Joanne, would he involve himself in the burial of her body? Can we connect Tony Allen to David Harvey? A connection strong enough to make Harvey confess to a murder that he didn't commit. I want to go back to Eileen Reynolds. I want evidence. I want corroboration. I want to solve this case. DCI Thorndike, DS Posner, C Superintendent Kernan. We're expected. Southampton Row's reputation precedes it, Jane. If you come in the front, you're likely to go out the back with blood on your face. Is this on record, David? No, of course not. Just talking. Good, because that's bullshit. If it was ever true, it's not anymore. I've never seen excessive force used in this, Nick. Oswald's certainly not like that. What with the Cameron case? You're here to investigate a death in custody. I know why I'm here, Jack. Well, let's concentrate on the case in hand, shall we? I intend to. Don't worry. Look, I think it's important for you to know that I take this job seriously. I'm not prepared to do a whitewash. No one's asking you to. It's my belief that when one of the foot soldiers cocks up, it's down to the officer in charge. I accept that. I don't know. Perhaps you allowed your personal feelings to cloud your judgment. I 
I beg your pardon. It'll keep. Could you ask the custody sergeant? Mike Calder. Yeah, to uh, step into my office, please. One more thing, David. If I'm to be interviewed, I'd like to speak to an officer senior in rank to me. Well, that may not be possible. You've arrested him for murder. If it wasn't for you, none of this would have happened. Tony wouldn't hurt anyone, let alone tie them up, rape them. Wait a minute, What's his Sarah? daughter going to do now? How did you know that she was tied up? How did you know That's she was That's another raped? life you've ruined. Well, who told you that? He was going to be married this weekend. Who told you she was tied Don't up? Leave us alone. Who told you she was tied up? Would you like to come this way, please, sir? He's just in here, all right? Tony Allen, who was to have been married this weekend, leaves a fiancé and a three-year-old daughter. You can't pull Sarah Allen in now. Not with all this going. I just want to talk to her. Off-premises is fine. Too soon. Instead, it has turned... Go back to Harvey. Well, I have done. He can't talk at the moment. I don't know if he ever will be able to again. Well, then, see where other lines of inquiry lead you. We'll review the situation in a few days. Go home. Get some sleep. Yeah. And leave Sarah Allen out of it. For the moment. Vernon. I have to speak How to Sarah. How dare you come here? How dare it's you? It's very important. I have to speak to Sarah. Haven't you done enough damage? Just leave us alone. I have to speak to Sarah. My wife is... My wife. Go inside, Pop. Let me handle this. Go on. Sarah, were you there that night? I don't know what you're talking about. Or has Jason Reynolds spoken to you? I don't know any Jason Reynolds. Now leave us alone. Sarah, please, for Tony's door. sake, come I'm on. Sarah. The door.
Bring this number. It's a friend of mine. She helped someone who's at Broadwater Farm. She's good. Shrink. Yeah, sort of. Listen, there's no shame in that. Other people make a mistake at work. The firm loses a few grand. We make a mistake and someone loses their life. Did Mrs. Fagonwa recognize that belt? No. Go home, Bob. I've been expecting you. I wasn't lying. He was there with me that weekend. Came down a lot in those days. He had a caravan there. Sometimes he stayed with me, sometimes at the van. Well, then why did you say that it was the anniversary of his wife's death? It makes no difference. I've spoken to a solicitor and he tells me that confession is not worth the paper it's written on. It was obtained under duress. And if my brother did it, why is that blackie killed himself? Do you know Tony Allen? No, I've seen it on the telly. Because he did it, that's why. Well, then why did your brother confess? To get you lot off his back. You know, you're not helping your brother by lying for him, Eileen. I'm not lying! You don't have to stop loving him. You don't have to stop supporting him. But you do have to stop lying for him. Do you know something? You're a pious cow. I've done everything for that bloody man since he's been ill. I want my fingers to the bone to support him. I know, that's what I'm saying. I know you support him, like taking out that loan for you him. You lot think Five you know everything. Five grand's a lot of money. How could you afford to do that, Eileen? My son helps out, all right? Well, what does Jason do for a living? Now, you leave that boy out of this. That's a simple enough question. He has a sort of photography business. Well, what does that mean? In the summer, he works the seafront. I don't really know. I don't pry like you do. I mean, he's a seafront photographer. Yes. He used to keep a bloody monkey here at one time. OK?
Do your swords work, please. So Tony was involved? Yes. Thank Christ for that. Isn't that Sarah? Yes. And look at that. Recognise that? I want him picked up, and I want to team up here. I want this place turned over. What a collection. I wonder the old sword had an art attack. The wardrobe's full of it. Done a fair. Here, our boss, look. Close it up, take it downstairs. Quite a little photographer, isn't he? Put him in the bin. Hang on, Pat, isn't that shame? Yeah. Get on to Vice. See who publishes this muck. Listen, Bob, get someone down to Harvey's bedside. Make sure I'm informed as soon as he utters a sound. I don't want to find this little shit. Hello, Instagram. Seems as though Jason preferred amateur models. Well, he didn't have to pay them, did he? The, um, the Polaroids are early photographs. The later ones are much better quality, 35 mil. They're quite professional. Right. Would he develop them himself? I think black and white's pretty easy, but you need more sophisticated equipment for colour. I suppose he could have had a studio somewhere. Yeah. You know, it's worth checking with one of those places that specialise in developing dodgy photos. I mean, they might have an address or a contact number, even. Right. Can you pass those other pages? You were right, ma'am. Jason Reynolds attended the same school as Tony Allen. In fact, they were in the same year. Now, when Eileen moved to Margate to be closer to one of her boyfriends, Jason stayed on in London, living mainly at number 15. Oh, right. Now, the head of the year reckons they weren't friends, says Jason was a bit of a waster, a Jack the Lad. But if they were neighbours, I suppose they could have hung out together, but they sound so different. Which brings us back to Sarah. Kernan has ruled out of bounds. Ross. I know this is a bit out of left field, but I think I recognise her. Go on. I don't know. I mean, I've been looking at them for ages. Richard. The thing is, Camilla's really happy there. What's Camilla got to do with it? I think it's her teacher. Tell me if you recognise this person. No, I've never seen her before, Inspector. What about this girl? No. She's beautiful. No, Miriam, she was beautiful. Her remains were found buried in the garden of Number 15, Honeyford Road. Her hands had been tied behind her back with a belt. The belt belonged to a Jason Reynolds. Do you recognize this man? Miriam, do you want to look at the photos again? No need. Tell me what you know about the photographer. Jason Reynolds. I met him in the summer of 86. At that time, I was still at school still living with my parents in Margate. He was taking photographs on the seafront. You know a seaside photographer? He was charming, funny. As you know, I let him take photographs of me. For a while, he made me feel attractive, the center of attention. I stripped and posed. I dressed up and posed. Whatever he asked for, really. You see, I wanted to get away from home. My mother was ill and... He said his uncle had a flat I could rent, that he'd look after me. So I came with him to London, to Honeyford Road. Could you all please wait outside? Just line up quietly. I lived in the basement flat there for two months. June and July? Yes. 
Did you work as a prostitute, Miriam? No, not really. Jason tried to get me to go with various friends he brought round, but none of us really knew what we were doing. Did you have sex with his uncle, with David Harvey? Sometimes, when I couldn't pay the rent. Now, uh, do you recognize either of these two men? Did you have sex with either of them? No. Now, where were those photographs taken? At the flat. And in Margate? His uncle had a caravan. Can you tell me where exactly? I can't remember the name of the site. It was some way out of town. All right. Thank you very much. That's it? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Boss, look at this. What? Well, it's a 1992 calendar. So we're still using the caravan? Mm -hmm. Trial sites at the Margate area. Right. Phil, I want Eileen Reynolds arrested. Bring her in, put her in an interview room and let her stew. Right, boss. Maybe that'll bring Jason out from under his stone. All the caravan sites in the Margate area. Jonesy, give him a hand, will you? Can I have the phone for Larry? Now, this is the belt, Eileen, that was used to tie Joanne's hands behind her back. Do you recognize it? I've never seen it before. There's lots of belts that look like that. Well, I think it's quite distinctive. The dead girl. Joanne Fogunwa. Joanne and Tony. Joanne and Sarah Allen. So why isn't Mrs. Bloody Allen sitting here? Go and arrest her. Arrest Sarah. Because it's my belief that Jason took those photographs. You've no proof of that. Well, they were found in your brother's flat, Eileen. I don't know anything about that. It's your son, Eileen. Your son, the pornographer. Would you look at them, please? You won't look at them? All right, I'll describe them to you. The first shows a girl. She's about, um, she's about 14, I would say. Your son's penis is inserted in the girl's anus. Her face shows pain and fear. Stop it, you sick bastard bitch! It's not me in these photographs, Eileen. I didn't take them. Your son, Jason, did that. Right, this one shows a different girl. She's a little bit older, perhaps. <laughs> Tell me where Jason is. I don't know. We should never have come south. God, I did my best. He's no son of mine. He doesn't even talk like a son of mine. He's some sort of... Tell me where He's... Jason is. I don't know. Where's your brother's caravan, Eileen? As far as I know, he sold it. To help pay off the loan. service which is to be published tomorrow also warns that almost a third of the pupils on assisted places come from families of below average earnings and that one in ten is from an ethnic minority the government's expansion plans for the capital's orbital motorway could destroy more than 80 important wildlife sites says the Royal Society for Nature Conservation he claims ancient woodlands including oh is she and sleeping I don't like her taking drugs. Well, it's better than having her sobbing all night. Bob, hmm. why are you doing that? You're about Anthony. I know that. 
I just don't see how it helps. Well, if it helps me, then surely there's nothing wrong. You know, I'll be going back to college straight after the inquest. Of course. Is there someone who could take notes for you so you don't fall behind? Yes. Yes, don't worry. Sarah. Did Tony ever talk to you about about that night? No. The death in custody. My bath will be running over. Police station of 22-year-old Anthony Allen is at the centre of an internal police inquiry into the running of that station. Detective Superintendent Mike Kernan today issued the following statement after the news was announced that the coroner's inquest into the death would start tomorrow. I'm very pleased that the inquest opening tomorrow comes so promptly after this tragic event. I am confident that the verdicts will fully vindicate the police. What do you have to say about all the The Allen family Any more details about the suicide after? Therefore, I've been very fortunate in being able to secure the services of a professional barrister. No one is on trial. We're not investigating a crime, but a death. It's our job, yours and mine, to decide how Anthony Allen came to die in police custody. Oh, one word of warning. You may be asked to study some distressing photographs taken both at the time of the young man's death and at the autopsy. I consider the viewing of these pictures to be vital as an aid to reaching your decision. It must have taken a great deal of force and determination to strangle himself in such a manner, wouldn't you say? Well, I don't know about that, sir. Well, Professor Bream thought so. He thought that Tony Allen may have taken rather a long time to die. You did make your checks every 15 minutes, didn't you? 30 minutes, sir. Oh, yes. Because it's checks every 15 minutes for prisoners at risk. And, of course, you had decided that Tony Allen wasn't at risk, hadn't you? Mrs. Dora. Why was the flap left open? Because the prisoner requested that it be left open, sir. Why? To let in some fresh air. Because he couldn't breathe? Because he was claustrophobic? I don't know about that, sir. Mm. No, I don't suppose you do. If, as you say, he refused the offer of a solicitor... I did, sir. Why did you not make sure that some responsible adult was with him? His father, for example, who was in reception almost the whole time? Because there was no need. But his mental health was of concern to you, was it not? No, sir, it wasn't. Yeah. But we can see from the custody record Quiet. that you called a doctor at 9.15 p.m. Yes. So you must have been concerned. But he didn't arrive, did he? Till after 1 a.m. Didn't you think to call another doctor? I was busy. A boy loses his life because you were busy. Please, Mrs. Dura. Doctor or no doctor, you had it in your power to send Tony Allen to hospital. With hindsight, Sergeant, would you not agree that you made a series of ill-judged, not to say fatal, decisions? 
Yes, I, uh, I made mistakes. I, I admit it. For God's sake, man, don't Sorry, cry about it. Sergeant. It's Muddyman. I'm at the hospital. Listen, David Harvey died at 7.30 this evening. God. This investigation's turning into a graveyard. How did it, uh, how did it go today? <coughs> oh, well. Tomorrow's another day, eh? Bye. Would you say that the interviews were carried out in accordance with PACE regulations? Yes, ma'am. You made no attempt to bully or pressurise Tony Allen? Sergeant Oswald, do you hold a higher national diploma for psychology? Yes, ma'am. Passed with distinction? Yes, ma'am. It is my intention to call an expert witness in a moment. Professor of Forensic Psychology. But before I do so, I would like to read you some of Tony Allen's last recorded words before you had him return to his cell and ask you for your assessment. Tony, I'm choking. You, no, you're not. Tony, I'm choking. I can't breathe. You, there's nothing wrong with you. Tony, I'm dirt. I'm dirt in everyone's mouth, choking them. My life is dirt. You, this is pointless. I'm putting you back in the cells. Tony, my life's a cell. I'm trapped. So much earth and mud. Earth to earth. Dust to dust. In the cold light of day, Sergeant, how would you assess Tony's mental state? Well, from that, I'd say he was hysterical. Obsessed with death? Yes. In despair? Yes. Suffering from claustrophobia? Possibly. Yet you had him return to his cell. His ten foot by six foot cell. You had an exemplary record, Sergeant. Could it be that in some subtle way you were being tougher, harder on this black suspect? because you, too, are black. I'm afraid your question is too subtle for me. Turning then to the attack Tony is alleged to have made on your person. Do you intend to question Sergeant Oswald for much longer, Mrs. Dura? Well, that rather depends on his replies, sir. Then I should like to adjourn for the day. The court will resume at 10 tomorrow morning. All rise. Bloody hell was the commander doing that? Mike, the verdict has to be suicide. Anything else is unthinkable. Well, meanwhile, Dura is projecting my station as a hotbed of racism and brutality. Well, I can kiss my promotion goodbye, <laughs> thanks to two black bastards. I beg your pardon. Well, you know what I mean. No, I don't. Oh, for God's sake. I'm sorry just to show up like this, but I needed to talk to someone. Someone? You. I just don't know what happened, you know, that night. She read that stuff back to me today. It was obvious that Tony Allen was at risk. And that I'd been bullying him. Why?
Perhaps they're right. Perhaps I am a coconut. Yeah, I heard them shouting that. What does that mean? A coconut. A bounty bar. Brown on the outside, white on the inside. I should have thought it was a bit more complex than that, Bob. Do you think I'm responsible for his death? No, I don't. But it's what you think that matters. I think I as good as killed him. I've got to go. You can stay if you want. Better go. Listen, call me if you want to talk, all right? Thanks. And at 11.20 p.m., you interrupted Sergeant Oswald and asked to have a word with him because you were concerned with the way that Sergeant Oswald was conducting the interview? No, Mum. You weren't concerned for Tony Allen's safety or well-being? No. Then why the need for a word? I thought the particular line of questioning was proven fruitless. I wanted to suggest another approach to Sergeant Oswald. I see. So nothing in Tony Allen's behaviour gave you cause for concern? No. Nothing at all, Mum. What happened to Tony Allen came as a complete surprise to me. And a shock. Mr Peters, you were in the cell next door to Tony Allen on the night he died. Yes, miss. Did you see or hear anything that is relevant to this inquest? I saw the body. They didn't want me to. They were trying to move me, but I saw it lying on the cell floor. I see. Anything else? Yes, miss. I heard the prisoner sobbing, trying to tell the police that he couldn't breathe. I heard some policeman kicking on his cell door, telling them to shut up. And then I heard him threaten them. Threaten them? What exactly did he threaten them with? Killing himself. Oh. If they didn't let him out of the cell... Quiet. Quiet. He threatened to kill himself. Go on. Well, I... I heard a police officer. I'm not sure which one shouting at him. And what did the police officer shout? Go on then, Nick Nog. Hang yourself. We're oh, all shouting it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Sidney Peters, can you tell the members of the jury how you came to be occupying the cell next to Anthony Allen on the night he died? I've been arrested, sir. For being drunk, sir. Mr. Peters, is it true that you're a member of Narcotics Anonymous? Yes, sir. Perhaps you'd like to tell the members of the jury why that is? Because, ladies and gentlemen, I used to be addicted to various narcotic substances. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Hello. Who is this? And why should I want to read that rag? I think you'll find something in it to amuse you. Now, promise me you'll buy it. Who is this?
Well, it's a threat, isn't it? From Jason. He's a photographer. Of course I'm going to court. I wouldn't give them the satisfaction. But someone needs to warn Oswald. Right. Morning. What? Page five. Cup of tea, please, mate. Egg and bacon, sausage, beans to a toast, and a fried slice. That explains it, doesn't it? Why the boss was so keen to take your side when Tony topped himself. So tell me. What she likes, she do tricks. I bet she loves it on top, doesn't she? Go on, tell me. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the time has come for you to withdraw and consider your verdict. But before you do, I should like to offer you some advice. There are a number of possible verdicts, but I think under the circumstances you should focus your attentions on just three. Unlawful killing, misadventure, Suicide. I'm sorry about that tabloid shit. So am I. I received these this morning. From the same source, I'd say. Now, look at them in private. Have you agreed a verdict? We have. The verdict is suicide. Start again with the caravan sites. Start with Clacton and any others that come within the postal district, and then work out along the Essex coast from there. Fast, please. Right. Have you seen Clacton? 
Everyone else start working away. Lovely Donna from Clacton. 36, 22, 34. It's you, innit? What? In the paper. <laughs> Your Donna. Don't sorry. Sarah, a phone! Who is it? I don't know. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Hello. Oh. It's not a good time to call. Hang on a sec. Okay. We can't let him get away with this, Sarah. He can't turn us into his victims as well. All right. But off the record, I'm not giving evidence. Tomorrow. No. No, tonight, please. All right. I can probably make it around seven. Bye. Caravan pub. Right, my name is Dick Seaman. Yeah. 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 Double sweet. Shame we're putting love. Walk my man's. Where the hell that? Nice, nice. Walk my man's. Street map. Where is it? Right. 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 Yeah, right. How long is it going to take to get there? Well, this time of day, I should think about three and a half hours. Right. I want Oswald to go. Inform the local plod. Tell them to sit tight till he gets there. Why Oswald? Hello, Jenny. Yes, Haskell. Because I say so. Yeah, yeah. Can you get oh, me? Oh, wow! Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Sandy, try them on. Go on then. Yeah, come through. One of you stay at the site manager's office and keep an eye out. The other two join me at the van, huh? OK. I haven't got a key. Can we have some of them Papa Dom things? <laughs> this is a Chinese restaurant, Sandy. I know. I'll order four, say. Eh? No need to worry your pretty little head. Cheers. Bloody hell. Can you wait outside, please? Just have to sit tight until he arrives. I think when it was really bad, he heard voices. I know he dreamed of Joanne. Night after night. Always the same dream. That she'd been buried alive.
he could hear these muffled screams. He couldn't bear to be alone. Confined spaces petrified him. If only I'd have been around, I could have explained, but... Mom and Pop just wouldn't believe that there was anything wrong with him. Sarah, you could still help by giving us a statement about what happened. He never had a girlfriend. No one was more surprised than me when Esther came onto the scene. I don't suppose that would have lasted if she hadn't have become pregnant. Sarah, please. Sorry. I thought only gypos and people from circuses lived in caravans. Well, I am with a circus, darling. <laughs> yeah, you're a clown. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm a knife thrower. In fact, I'm looking for a new assistant. What happened to your last one? Did you miss one night? <laughs> no, I never miss. She just got too old, that's all. All her ass was hanging out of her costume. Uh. I like a nice young ass. Tight little ass. <laughs> like yours. Dirty so. <laughs> Same again, cop. Was this the room that Tony was interviewed in? No, love, no. Disgusting. Would you say? Hey? My type? What's my type then, eh? Hey? Slay! Uh, yeah, all right, all right. Uh, Calm down. Yeah. Come on, darling. I was at home with Pop until Tony got back. That was just before nine as arranged. As soon as Pop had gone, Tony said he had to go out for a while. Of course, he wasn't supposed to, so we started arguing. I watched him go back out to a girl who was waiting for him. Joanne. Tony must have got Pop's keys from somewhere because they went next door. Into Harvey's house? Yes. Joanne was looking for a flat to rent and Tony told her about Harvey's basement, about how his father owned it and all that. I followed them and watched. They went into the bedroom together. They kissed. They lay on the bed together. I watched for a while. It made me feel odd. But I was 13 and curious, I suppose. Then I saw Jason come in. I had quite a crush on Jason at that time. Tony was pissed off to see me, but I wouldn't go. Tony and Joanne were dancing together. Jason was watching them, encouraging them, telling them to kiss. Oh, Just get the key. It's too big, look. Can't get it in. Jason found a Polaroid camera. Jason took photographs. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. So why don't you uh, make yourself at home, right? <laughs> this is the studio. Got my dark room in another van. Then Jason started making suggestions. 
What, what kind of suggestions? That we should undress. Encouraging Tony to touch Joanne. I could see Jason was getting turned on by it. We were all turned on in a way, but... He ran out of film after about ten pictures. But he wouldn't stop. He became more serious, more insistent. Oh! Hey, hey! Whoa, well, I'm sorry, all right? Look up. I'm sorry. Joanne was scared. Tony tried to stop him. But Jason got angry. More angry than I've ever seen anyone. He went completely wild. He punched Joanne in the face. Her mouth was bleeding. He broke a bottle. I really believed he'd use it. He made Tony tie some tights. They were my tights. Round Joanne's mouth. Jason took off his belt and tied Joanne's hands behind her back. Don't be afraid, eh? Nothing to worry about. It's the punters. They love a bit of bondage. I won't tie you too tight. It's all acting, really. I don't like it. Of course you do. He raped her there in front of us. He held the broken bottle over her face. And we did nothing. <laughs> he stood and watched. <laughs> Joanne was choking on the gag, and we stood and watched. <laughs> when it was all over, he warned us that we were guilty too, that he had the photographs to prove it. He let us leave. We didn't know what to do. The dreadful thing was that we just left Joanne there. We weren't even sure whether she was dead or not. The following night, I heard noises in next door's garden. When I looked out my window, I saw Jason and Harvey digging. They were putting the earth into sacks and Jason was taking them off somewhere to dump. I guessed why. But I couldn't look after that. My nightmare was the sound of those shovels. The following morning, I told Tony and we took an oath together, never to tell a soul. The next time I made myself look from my bedroom window, all the slabs were in place. Not a sign that anything had happened. Sometimes I could almost believe that it hadn't. until she was dug up again. It was an awful secret that we carried around with us. Oh, God. What am I going to do without him? Without Tony?
all right. Oh, please. It's all right. Get out of me! A murder of Joe uh, for uh, You do not have to say. Uh, uh, but anything you do say may be given in evidence. Uh, <laughs> 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 the show the other night. Just your scene, eh? Nice bit of beef. Ain't nice black tube steak up your stain. Look, this is not official, you understand, but under the circumstances, I think it appropriate to give you a little taster. My recommendation is that disciplinary papers are served on Calder, D.I. Birkin and D.S. Oswald. I am critical of the way the station was run. Procedures need to be tightened up, too many canteen cowboys. But I find no one to blame for the death of Tony Allen. Clearly, David, you're the right man to sort this station out. And, of course, congratulations to you too, Mike. Nailing Jason Reynolds and getting the move upstairs. I shall have to give you the name of my tailor. He's particularly adroit at disguising any tendency towards the middle-aged spread. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, do you intend to do anything about this press story, sir? No, let it blow over. Oswald's back at West End Lane? Yes, sir. But besides, Tennyson's a bloody good detective. Perhaps but one who's displayed a considerable lack of judgment. I think you know what I mean. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that Jason Reynolds is going away for a very long time. The CPS has informed me that they're not going to press charges against anyone else. So, well done. Right, well, I don't know about you, but I'm off to the pub where I'd like to buy each and every one of you an extremely large drink. That won't be necessary, Jane. Perhaps I can take this opportunity to make an announcement. Mr. Kernan here will, from now on, 
be known to you all as Chief Superintendent Kerner. <laughs> I'm also very pleased to be able to introduce his successor here at Southampton Row, Superintendent Thorndyke. Thank you, Commander. I realized that I may have made a few enemies carrying out the investigation on behalf of MS-15. So the best thing to do is to clear the air straight away. If anyone thinks it's gonna be a problem for them, get in the way of the smooth running of the station, then they should apply for a transfer immediately. And uh, since we're all about to go off duty, just to prove I have a lighter side, I've arranged for us all to have a drink to mark the occasion. It's round the back. I didn't even merit an interview. Jane. Sir, could I have a word with you, please? Official or unofficial? Official. Jane, it can wait, sure. No, it can't wait. OK. You'll have my formal request for a transfer first thing in the morning. Thank you. 